to Tune of the Month and happy April! I'm Mari Black and this month I have for you a tune by your popular request. A lot of you have written to me asking if I would teach Oliver Schroer's amazing real horseshoes and rainbows. Um, as always, you have excellent taste in tunes, those of you who email me with requests. And uh, yeah, I'd love to play this one. Oliver Schroer was an amazing uh, British Columbian fiddler and composer of tunes and thinker of music in, in a lot of ways. And uh, this is a particularly awesome piece of piece of dance-like composition. So let's do it. Horseshoes and rainbows. And that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks as always for stopping by. Hope to see you next month. And if you're ready to learn it, you know how this works. Get your instrument. Let's do it. Okay. So, as you may have already figured out, if you were listening with your, I'm about to play this, tune of the month ears. <laughs> um, this is an E minor. You can hear kind of that gravelly, uh, gravelly, darker minor sound. And maybe you found that the note E happens to match with a lot of that tune. It's the root that keeps coming back. Um, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's break it down. I'm going to play the A section uh, slowly, under tempo. I'm going to play two A's all the way through. So you can start to get the tune really in your ears. See if you can start to sound it out with me as we go. Um, this does indeed follow the usual dance tune uh, roadmap. Part one, the theme. Part two, the little turnaround. Part one's gonna come back and then there's an end. See how much you can follow. Ready? Two, three, and four. your right will need a different ending to get to the B section if you heard that, but let's start with the A. Okay, so this tune has such a distinctive pattern <clears throat> that it's got in our, our groups of four running notes. That it's like, it's one and then three repeated notes, right? One, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. It's actually a very unusual pattern. This doesn't happen very much. Um, that I know of uh, in in like standard dance tunes, which I guess you could say this is one of them, but you, you know what I mean. Smell what I'm stepping in. Try with me, part one. I have two pickups going up. Uh, well, I'll go down both separate bows, I think. I'll do it again, part one. One, two, three. find where those groups are we're in E minor remember so the pickups are going up the scale from the root to the third back to the root that's E minor 
and then he continues down the E minor chord. Right? That's the bottom of the E minor chord. E minor. Now it's going to be kind of an A minor thing here. That second half, A minor. Now let's put it together. Two pickups. Two, three, E minor. A minor. Good. Now you notice because there are those three repeated notes there, it's a little bit tricky to do a lot of slurring, right? Because the, the slurs will become ties and mess with the rhythm. So you can play this all separate bow. And if you're doing it kind of a chugga chugga tempo, like what we're doing now, something very groovy, like a slow reel, that will work pretty well if you do them beautifully and smoothly, right? Softened wrist and fingers. Um, but there's one bowing pattern that everybody who plays this tune, all the advanced players, um, that gets used a lot and it's the one that fits with this particular figuration it ends up being what we on here on two of the month would call a displaced hook three and what some people think of as slurring across the bar line check it out one two three that's actually just a hook three right so i'm gonna go one two three slur extra and I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, extra land. And it fits really well. It, it connects those groups of one plus three and one plus three. Make sense? I was trying to act it out with my fingers. It didn't work very well. But you smell what I'm stepping in. Try it again with the bowing. Two, three, two pickups. to do slowly at first if you're not used to using this bowing pattern but when you want to take this tune faster that bowing pattern is going to make this feel so much better than just separates you'll get tangled in the string crossings with separates at faster tempo try it again two three one part one especially for the bowing since the notes are hard just go ahead and rewind the video the internet is wonderful you can rewind and I will practice with you as many times as you like now where we just landed on the F sharp that's the beginning of part two I'll play part two the turnaround <laughs> Bowing. Do you notice it works all the way through? One, two, three, slur, extra. One, two, three, slur. And the extra will be the pickups going back to part one. Try it again. Catch that bowing. You're going to want it when it's faster. D major. One, two, I went back and kind of connected it back to part one there. The pick up land, right? Um, let's do it one more time, part two, and then we're gonna keep going back to part one. It's exactly the same like the beginning. Part two is D major. One, two, three, slur, extra. One, two, three, slur. Part 
Start one. Now we're at the ending. Check it out. It starts almost exactly like part two. Now this is cool. Not many tunes do this, where the end of part one is actually going to go above, uh, the end of the A section is going to come above the register that we're playing the A section in. So we get to descend as we repeat. Listen. like my particular suggestion there are a lot that will work because we're not locked into that same repeated pattern that we are from part one of the a section that really kind of pushes us towards the hook three so this is cool in tunes there's some places in the tune where the tune will really tell you what bowing you need to do right because the the repeated notes and such will lock you in and there are some parts that kind of anything will do and as long as you make sure you land down bow on the downbeat uh, with gravity everything will work out fine all right, we have the whole A section. Let's put it together. Part one with two pickups. One, two, three. Part two, D major. Ferro, Shaka, E minor. Back to part one. seen this in some past tunes of the month perhaps you've seen it out in the rest of your fiddling life as well sometimes tunes will do part one part two part one again ending but it's a different ending depending on if you're going back for the a section or on to the b this is one of those tunes really good compositional move here by mr schroer so we already learned the the ending that goes back to the a right boom ba -da 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 -da, that goes up so we drop back into the a section right? If you want to go on to the B, the B section is going to be down lower in the register. So we can't go up. We'll get stuck in the wrong place. So if you're going on to the B, here's the ending. It's actually very easy. It starts with the same D major. So you hear where it sounded like it was going to go up, but then it just leveled back off, right? It's scale. D major or high scale. Once you get to this D, go up the scale and back down. Keep going down the scale. And you land on your low E ready for the B section. Try that again. It's actually very slick. D major arpeggio. Up the scale, back down. Keep going down the way to E. Do it again. This is the ending going to the B section. section. 
now we get the B. And everybody loves the B section. I mean, these, both these sections are great, but let, let's face it, the B section is the real, like, super groover here. I'll do the whole B section um, and see if you hear anything familiar, not just from this tune, the A section, there's a little bit of repeated material, but also from, like, the rest of your life. Does this remind you of anything you've heard before? Here's the B section. Part one. <laughs> ornaments out um, so we learn it in a pure way. If you find some slipping in like I do, just go with it because they feel great, they sound great. Okay, so this probably is ringing a bell for you. It's To me it sounds like, and I think it actually is intended to be a quote from um, Sound of Music, you know, the raindrops on roses and the kittens, I don't know the words, it's, it's my favorite things, right? The only difference is this is a reel in 4-4. Uh, my favorite things is a waltz in 3-4. So he's adding an extra beat and it's very clever. All right, so we need this. Um, it's my favorite things with the horseshoes and rainbows 3 plus 1 pattern. Or 1 plus 3 rather. So I start with the quarter note. And I need to slur to make sure that I stay down bow with the downbeat. Check it out. minor chord. Here's my root E minor, here's my upper fifth, E minor, lower fifth, right, outlining the E minor chord. I'll do it again. One little slur, well, three, one, two, three, slur. Try it again, part one, right on the downbeat, and... because we have that long quarter note to start. Slurred. Now we're back to hook three. One, two, three, slurred. All right, that hook three pattern is going to work almost the entire tune. All right, if you'd like more repetitions on that part one, just rewind. I'll practice with you as much as you like. In real time, I'm going on. Part two is really just a variation of part one. Listen to it. Wild, right? Yeah, so same idea. Here I'm using a slightly different bowing. I'm using a three plus one. One, two, three. And here's a really fun part. Now, that's such a neat little parallel pattern. 
And if you're a uh, under the chin bowed string player, it ends up being two, one, two, one. Right? It's a mixed chord voicing, but the pattern in my hand is really easy. Two, one, two, one. So sometimes it's easier for us to think patterns, right? This is the D major arpeggio. This is up the scale. This is a frere jacques or whatever it is. Um, and sometimes if that pattern isn't so clear, it's easier for us to feel things in our hand, right? One, two, one, two, or uh, I use a lot teams, odds team, third finger, first finger, and evens team, open two and four. We're going to see that in just a second. So you have to kind of decide when you're learning tunes, um, either by music or especially by ear, is it easier to think of the pattern of how is the melody moving, D major arpeggio, scale, whatever, or is it easier to think about the physical pattern in your hand, or maybe both, right? It's all up to you. All right, let's do part one and part two together because it actually makes more sense. Think of it as the theme and the theme variation. These are a few of my favorite things. Ready? And... <laughs> those last I'm connecting into the next part even though we haven't done it yet and I know it sounds like it wants to go on just get you while you're practicing get your fingers used to connecting into the next part of the section it will make it easier to put the whole beat together in just a moment all right and notice I am switching up the bowing a little bit here um, and you can this B section there are more options available because there are a few repeated repeated notes in terms of ornaments, usually we add them in later, but you might have found yourself adding them in now. I certainly did. Anybody who's played Irish E minor tunes that like hang on this low E knows that it's really great to roll that. It's kind of like once you know that trick, it's kind of hard to resist. You probably hear it's hard for me to resist, so let's not resist. If you have that roll and you feel like it, just do it. <laughs> and if you're not sure exactly what that roll is, we do Irish rolls in great detail in some past tunes of the month, but I'll tell you really quickly now, a roll is you take the note, and then real quickly your left hand is going to play that note, a note above, back to the note, below, and then note, note above, note below, note. And I'm using here a skip-wise roll, where the, the top note, instead of being a neighbor, Failure wise, I'm doing right E G E right. So you could do it stepwise or skip wise. We won't really hear the pitch if you're playing it well because those grace notes should be so quick and light that we don't hear. That's not a roll. This is a roll. Do you notice how I do it real quickly and then land on that E? Try the two themes together. If you want to try rolling both those long E's, you're welcome to. Ready? Two, three, and roll. Right here. One more. Put those rolls in. More repetitions on that just for one the video we'll play it together in uh, not real time as many as you like let's do the part we've all been waiting for the super cool variation <laughs> where 
we can think about these chords. This is a C major seventh chord. And a B minor seventh chord. Right? But if you don't really know your seventh chords, and that doesn't mean much to you, this is a good time to think in teams. I should just do it on my fiddle. That's all my odds team. I'm playing threes and ones. And I land here, and I stay evens team. All twos and fours, and opens. And I land there. So, odds team goes to evens, stay evens, evens team goes to odds. Right, the landing is on the new team. Let's try that. Two, three, and odds. And land, evens, and land. Okay, now notice the bowling I'm using there. It is actually a hook three. It feels a little different because I'm hooking the, th the hook three slur three note slur is slurring into a quarter note. So it feels like only two notes, but it's the equivalent of three egg notes. Sometimes I call it an up a scoop. One, two, three, scoop up, extra. One, two, three, scoop up, extra land. Yeah, it feels great, sounds great, looks great, is great. Do it again. Two, three, odds team. And one, two, three, scoop up, evens team. Boeing is going to work great at tempo. Ready? Again. And ready for the ending. Two pickups. Odds team. Down the scale. B minor. Ooh, it's such a cool sound, but it's easy patterns. Odds team. chord with a neighbor tongue to finish B minor. put the whole ending together this is an E minor seventh chord that's your odds team down the scale B minor let's put the cool part the cool variation together with the ending starting with your C major seventh odds team
Well done. Okay, so in addition to learning the tune, you notice we're doing a bunch of things as we're going. We're really checking on the bowing. I'm asking you to not wait till later to put in a good bowing, right? Make sure that your bowing is landing you downbeat on the down bows. Down bows on the down beat, rather. Um, make sure you're not just playing all separate bows, because with this tune, with all the string crossings, it's not going to work well faster. And the same thing at a slower tempo, if you end up up bow on a downbeat, it's not the end of the world, you'll be able to fix it. But when this moves dance tempo, you're not going to really fare very well with gravity as your enemy. Right? Gravity wants to, us to go down bow. And if we put that on the downbeats, it's so much easier. And it sounds better. And it can move faster and it's dancier and the list goes on and on of benefits. So while you're learning the tune, just go ahead and program your bowing as you go. It may feel like it takes a little more time the first time through here, right? With a little more time to like learn the tune and get it comfortable, but it is so worth it. It's actually a shortcut to playing the tune well, all right? So um, we were starting to kind of like incidentally decorate the B section, putting in those little E minor rolls. <laughs> Right. Um, let's put let's put a little decoration in the A section if you want. Um, some people do this a lot, particularly people with um, Irish or, or like down east Canadian sensibilities. Right, we have those little skips. And we know from past tune of the month and perhaps all the rest of your fiddling life that anytime you have a duple skip duple, it can be very tempting, easy, stylistic, cool, fun, to fill in rather than just these duples, to fill in the missing note as a triplet. I just let it mess up the bowing, but. I'm doing that. So this will change your bowing just a little bit because the triplet needs to be slurred in order to keep it smooth. You could, if you played it separate, it would be like a cut triplet. That's more of a Scottish or Cape Breton sound and different from the flavor that we want for this tune. So you're going to try and slur those triplets as much as possible. And it may mean that temporarily you need a, a, to slur across the downbeat. Where we get the displaced hook three okay so now the three note slur is actually coming across the bar line we've seen this in past two of the month tunes that are old time we've done this quite a bit the american old time style does it a lot um and in this case it will feel like the downbeat is temporarily going up bow but we're going to give it a strong emphasis right <laughs> as well so if that felt tricky for you to move the hook three so where it usually goes if I have a bar of running eighth notes here they are four and four in a group the hook three will usually go in the middle so here uh, it's one two three slur -er -er, and then these two are extra right so if it's the displaced hook three what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to the next group so this hook three, instead of happening in the middle of the measure, happens across the bar line. And that's what allows me to sneak in the little triplet um, on the downbeat of those groups. So if you understand those bowings, I highly recommend trying that out and switching between the, uh, the classic hook three in the middle of the bar, like what we learned at the beginning of this video, and then um, displacing it, moving it so it slurs across the bar line, opening up the triplet for you on the downbeat. 
Um, if that feels like a bridge too far, no worries. Go with the classic hook three that we started at the beginning. That's going to be the best universal bowing. As you get good at it, then you can start moving it around. And not only will it work well for horses and rainbows, but it will help you with a lot of your stylistic playing, especially in the American old time tradition. The Irish do it a little bit too. Um, certainly the Texas folks do a lot of that. Um, and it will hone your bow skills and make it easier for you to smooth in different ways while still making the downbeat sound like it's down bow. That's the trick, right? The downbeat still has to be the strong beat for the dancers to feel the pulse. All right, so let's finish up by playing through the whole tune at kind of a mid groovy pace. Um, we're gonna move it a little bit so it starts to make a little more sense and let you really try out those bowings and it will, it will push you. I'm gonna go moving enough that if you end up backwards bow it's going to temporarily trip you up so if you feel that happening that's good um and you'll just jump back in on the next part right uh but you're trying to use your bowing to keep you balanced on this tune grooving the whole thing we'll do two a's and two b's you can use the triplets with uh the display took three you can use classic hook three your choice i'm probably going to mix it up one two three <laughs> sound nice and final for your listeners, your dancers, whoever it is you're playing along with. All right, everybody, that's the tune. Your request. Excellent taste as always. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we use this tune as an excuse to look at these different bowing patterns and how they can play out on um, unusual melodic patterns like horses and rainbows. And then by practicing on this tune, you can have them ready to use on all sorts of other reels and different styles to bring out the sound that you want. All right, as always, if you would like to see sheet music for this or any future tunes of the month, make sure that you are subscribed to my email newsletter. I love to keep in touch with y'all um, via the old fashioned email. And I uh, send out once a month a little hello that includes my own uh, handwritten, as neatly as I possibly can, <clears throat> my handwritten version of the current tune of the month. So if you're already subscribed to the newsletter, you already have Horseshoes and Rainbows sitting in your inbox. If you are not subscribed yet, go to my website, www.mariblack.com and sign up for the newsletter and you will have future tunes of the month coming to your inbox very shortly. And I hope you have fun with this and stick around, subscribe and come back next month. We will do more tunes. Have fun, you guys. <laughs>